Hello, this is a 1978 Series 3 long wheelbase Land Rover. Uh, it's called Kermit. I intend it to be my daily driver, but uh, yeah, it's got a few issues to attend to first. You probably noticed the main one, there's no engine, but I have a plan for that. So this thing actually belonged to a mate of mine. Um, you may have seen him in some of the other videos. And I think something went wrong with it and he intended to fix it, get it back on the road, but it sat in his driveway for about eight years. Eventually he got bored of looking at it, gave it to me. Um, <laughs> then I parked it up and looked at it for a couple more years. Um, eventually I got it running just enough to get up to the workshop. I took the engine out and put it in my Land Rover, into the little Land Rover, um, which it's more suited to, because this was a two and a quarter diesel, a very, very puny output. In the short wheelbase Land Rover that I'm using at the moment, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. In this, it was woefully underpowered. So my intention was always to put a 200 TDI in this, which is the engine that I took out of the Range Rover. Unlike my previous Land Rover restoration project, which was simply a case of trying to get the vehicle running again because I needed it, um, this one I'm going to take a bit longer and do a more thorough job. So my intention is to completely strip it down to the chassis and then start from there. <laughs> I'm quite intrigued as to find out what, what horrors lie within. Looking at it from here, it, the chassis actually looks quite good. But yeah. My experience of Series 3 chassis is that they're generally terrible, but we'll, we'll see. Even though the other Land Rover, the one that I restored and is back on the road at the moment, has been and is very useful, what I'd always wanted to have was a long wheelbase like this, but not, not a van body, but a, a pickup. So that's my intention with this one, is to strip it right back to the chassis, 
do anything that I need to do to the chassis and then build it up from there. Over the years I've accumulated an awful lot of Land Rover parts and some of them I've had waiting for this project for a long time. So I've got a full set of parabolic springs for instance. I've got the cab to turn it into a pickup. Um, I think I've got just about everything that I need to actually do the project without going out and buying anything anything new. Although I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure some things will crop up as we go. First step is to drag it out of the brambles and get it up to the workshop. You can always look out the side. Oh, that's true. Yes, where am I? Oh, cop. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Uh, it looks like the handbrake's on. You what?
Well, it looks better already. <laughs> I didn't go overboard on the roof or the sides because they're coming off. I'm not going to keep those because it's going to be a pickup. And no doubt it's going to take a few more applications with the jet wash. But uh, yeah, it's a good start. Alright, let's have a preliminary inspection. Now. Well, we're starting the engine bay. Obviously there isn't one. The engine that was in here is in my other Land Rover. This part of the bulkhead looks good. There's some repair sections in the footwell down there that have started to come away. What I'll probably do is take this bulkhead off, because I'm going to strip it all down, take this bulkhead off, um, shot blast it, and then there's some really nice repair panels you can get, which is um, which I've used previously, and I'll weld those in. These look to be defender doors on here. Um, I've got the windy windows. <laughs> Although the handle's fallen off this one, so it's not winding anywhere at the minute, but yeah. And a different sort of latching mechanism. Well, that seems to have fallen off as well. I'm not sure if I'll keep these doors or swap them. I've got some Series 3 military doors which have got the diagonal windows in. Might be a better match for this. I suppose. Partly depends how ropey these ones are. Get inside then, and it's well. <laughs> Seat box looks alright. This extra lever here is an overdrive, which is uh, quite an unusual thing to find in a Land Rover now. So we've got the main gearbox lever here. Down there is the high and low selector. There should be a yellow knob on this one for the forward drive selector and then that one's the overdrive. And the back is full of crap. And I think this, yeah, this car used to be glued to the ceiling but looks like the glue's going up. Underneath them, can't really see much yet. This will all be revealed when I get the body off. Yeah. So this here is why putting your recovery point on the front bumper is not the best idea. <laughs> At least not without some serious reinforcement. I intend to change the front bumper anyway for something a bit beefier. That's how I look in here. So I'll probably take out all this dashboard. I don't like the Series 3 dashboards. It's too, too much plastic for my liking. So I'll either put in a Series 2 one, much sort of simpler console. Well, it's just a tiny little metal thing that sits in the middle. Or I'll make my own. It's not exactly a complicated bit of kit, is it? Well, it's still very much at the beginning of the beginning of the work. At least it's out of the trees. It's next to the workshop. I've washed off most of the filth, I reckon. Next thing to do then is let it dry and then I'll start pulling it a bit.